Letting go of grudges and anger, Figu Landis Gropi, Australia, nor 33 February 2024. A lady from our common law assembly shared a newspaper clipping about a business publicly apologizing for treating their customers badly during the COVID pandemic due to the mask mandate. In the short notice in the newspaper, the business was expressing its regret about offending some customers. The lady who shared this clipping and others from the group were doubting whether the regret would be genuine and one person named and shamed other businesses in our area who had treated their customers badly, and they vowed not to patronize those businesses again. It, it seems that not many people are aware that anger harms the liver, and that by holding on to their grudges or anger, they are harming themselves first and foremost. In traditional Chinese medicine TCM, most organs are connected to an emotion, and the liver is affiliated with anger. Anger causes the liver's energy flow to be blocked. If pronounced enough, this congestion causes a sensation of heat rising up to the head, often showing up as a red face and bloodshot eyes. A wide range of direct and indirect evidence points to anger's ability to cause harm to the liver. There is a well-known idiom in German that can often be heard if someone is vexed or in a bad mood. Ist dir ein Los über die Leber gekrochen? Which literally means, did a louse crawl across your liver? In other words, is something bugging you? This German idiom stems from the antiquity and middle ages and is based on the belief that the liver is the seat of our passion, our temperament, especially the anger. The louse represents something little, something insignificant. So, even small things can irritate one's liver and over time possibly stop the liver's energy flow as suggested in TCM. In Buddhism, a parable is used to demonstrate the negative effect of anger. The question is asked, If you are angry with someone and you pick up a piece of hot coal to throw at them, who will get burnt first? Yera. The hot coal represents one's anger, and if it is thrown at someone, the person throwing it is getting hurt first and foremost. And if one even dared to hang on to it, the damage would naturally be greater. From the examples above, it can be seen that it would be wise to let go of any anger. This is easier said than done. First, the anger has to be recognized and acknowledged, and one has to take responsibility for one's own anger and not blame another person, thing, or creature for it. To say to someone, you make me angry, is very wrong, because even though the anger may be triggered by another person, a thing or a creature and so forth, the anger is nevertheless a feeling or an emotion in oneself that cannot be made outside of oneself. Every person creates his or her own reaction to certain situations, and when a trigger causes anger in one person, the same trigger may only cause a shrug with the shoulders, a shaking of the head, or even amusement in another person, so it cannot be said that one person or happening makes someone angry. So how can one learn to deal with anger in a better way? In his article, Anger and Rage, Billy gives the following advice with regard to anger and rage. The trigger for it always and solely lies in the human being's capacity to decide and in the behavior of the human being, because he or she alone, with his or her thoughts and feelings, determines what shall be and will be and what shall not be and will not be. Thus, the full responsibility for anything and everything lies in the human being's decisions and deeds alone. And once these are thoroughly looked into, the motive for that is found exclusively in the human consciousness, that is to say, in the thoughts and their feelings as well as in the behavior patterns resulting from them. Billy then goes on to explain that first and foremost the consciousness and its thoughts, as well as the feelings coming forth from them, must be controlled and guided onto the right tracks. 
This does not mean a control of the consciousness as well as the thoughts and feelings in the sense of a deep meditation, rather only the control of the intellect and the rationality. Through this, namely a forcing back of anger or rage, can thereby be guaranteed by consciously creating an adequate high regard for the rights of the fellow human being and the understanding for him or her and by esteeming him or her in equality and equal value. Therefore, our anger can be reduced by consciously creating a high regard for the rights of our fellow human beings and by understanding them and esteeming them in equality and equal value. To achieve this, everything and everyone, including oneself, needs to be shown love, kind-heartedness, feeling for others, dignity, calmness, and peacefulness. Billy explains further in the same article. It is an undisputable fact that anger and rage do not make one glad and happy, and they create neither love, freedom, nor peace, and also no harmony, but to the contrary, they make all these high values impossible. If everything negative, ungood or evil and aggressive which appears, is considered intellectually and rationally, and everything is shown love, kind-heartedness, feeling for others, and dignity as well as calmness and peacefulness, then the consciousness is calmed just as much as the thoughts and their feelings, which also brings forth a calming effect on the psyche. A better understanding of certain creational principles could also help in reducing the anger one feels. For example, errors or mistakes have to be made in order to learn and evolve. Therefore, becoming angry due to an error made is not wise, and forgiving another is beneficial, according to the book Omphalon Murado III, Canon 32. 1330. Making errors is human and absolutely essential for learning, but forgiving is wise. 1330 Fehler begehen ist menschlich und zum Lernen erforderlich, vergeben aber ist weise. 1577 One corrects an error by not doing it again. However, a fault is corrected by making up for the damage, by assisting the harmed one and by not perpetrating the fault another time. 1577 Ein Fehler behebt man dadurch. Dass man ihn nicht wieder tut, ein Schuld wird aber dadurch behoben, dass der Schaden wieder gut gemacht wird, dem Geschädigten geholfen und die Schuld nicht ein andermal begangen wird. 2004. The most beautiful flower is the one of forgiveness. 2004. Die allerschönste Blume ist die der Verzeihung. 2112. If somebody recognizes and sees his or her own errors, then he or she finds no time to see the errors of others. 21.12. Erkennt und sieht jemand seine eigenen Fehler, dann findet er keine Zeit, um nach den Fehlern anderen zu sehen. And we could also follow Marianne Eulinger Mondria's advice in her article, Anger Harms the Liver, and reduce or prevent anger by saying to ourselves over and over again, I am strong. I am indestructible. For in myself I am full of love, peace, freedom, harmony, and feelings of compassion for all creatures. Vibka Walder, 